What if your T-cells were 1000x more powerful? Could a mosquito kill you? Imagine a perfect afternoon. You're sitting in your backyard, holding a cup of coffee, the breeze is mild, and all is right with the world. Suddenly, you feel a faint, almost negligible, prick on your arm. A mosquito. You don't even bother to look up, just wave your other hand lazily to brush it away. You expect a small, annoying bump to appear in the next few minutes, accompanied by a brief itch. It's the same boring routine skirmish that nature and your body have staged billions of times. But this time, it's different. In the 0.1 seconds after the mosquito's proboscis leaves your skin, you don't feel an itch. You feel a searing, volcanic burst of pain. You look down in horror. The dot on your arm isn't rising, it's inflating. Your skin tissue is ballooning before your very eyes, like a car's airbag deploying at high pressure. Within three seconds, it's the size of an egg. Within five, it's the size of a tennis ball. Its color changes from red to an ominous, purplish black. You try to scream, but you realize you're getting dizzy. The world is spinning. In the last moment before your consciousness fades to black, the only question you can form is, what is happening? Welcome to our thought experiment. In this experiment, we've unlocked a hidden achievement for you. Your body's special forces, your T-cells, have been instantly strengthened by a factor of 1,000. And the perfect murder weapon that will kill you is that insignificant mosquito you just brushed away. Spoiler alert, you are finished. Not only will you die, but you will die in an incredibly spectacular, efficient, and almost punk rock fashion at the hands of your own body. This is an epic tragedy of self-destruction caused by friendly fire. To understand how you speedrun death, we must first understand what is a mosquito bite? And how does your 1000 XT cell interpret this bite? The normal world, a polite local conflict. In our real world, when a mosquito bites you, it injects about one picomole of saliva protein under your skin. How small is that? One picomole is about 0.000000006 grams. This is roughly 100,000th the mass of a single speck of dust. Your immune system, this vast and ancient defense network, notices the invasion. Its reaction is extremely restrained and polite. Militia, deployed, sentinels, mast cells, stationed in your skin are activated. Flares, fired, they release a tiny bit of histamine. Local reaction, the histamine makes your capillaries dilate slightly, leaking a bit of fluid to form a small bump, while notifying the police, neutrophils, to come check it out. T-cells arrive, if needed days later, the T-cells, special forces, might slowly arrive to confirm the enemy's identity and file a report, so they can respond faster next time. The result, you get a small bump. It itches a bit. This is a perfect, textbook, low-cost, high-efficiency, local policing matter. The 1000X World, D-Day. Now, back to your backyard hell. Your T-cells are 1000 times stronger. We must create a rigorous definition for this strengthening, as it will be the basis for all our calculations. Reactivity X1000, your T-cells have become extremely paranoid and sensitive. They will misinterpret that one picomole of mosquito saliva as a 1,000-fold larger, extremely severe biological invasion, e.g., a massive parasitic infection. Efficacy X-1000. Every single activated T-cell, when it fights, releases 1,000 times the amount of chemical weapons, cytokines, as a normal cell. Now, the disaster begins. The mosquito bites you. Your T-cell sentinels sound the highest level code red alarm in 0.01 seconds. They don't perceive one picomole of protein. They perceive 1,000 picomoles of an overwhelming alien invasion fleet. And so, your body skips all the policing steps and immediately launches an all-out war. Hardcore calculation time 1, the cytokine nuke. Let's do a Fermi estimation to see how this signal is nuclearly amplified. 1. The normal signal chain. Invasion occurs dash, 100 T-cells are activated dash, each T-cell releases 100 units of flares, cytokines, to call for backup dash, eventually, maybe 10,000 soldiers, like macrophages, arrive at the battlefield. Total signal strength, $100 backslash text cells, backslash times 100 backslash text, unit slash cell, equals 10,000 backslash text, signal units, dollar. 2. The 1000x signal storm. First level amplification, reactivity x 1000. 100 T-cell sentinels are activated dash, they misjudge the threat by 1000x dash, they each send out a 1,000x stronger distress call. Distress call, $100 backslash text cells, backslash times 10,000 backslash text signal units, exaggerated threat, backslash approximate 1 million backslash text signal units, dollar. The message received by the entire immune system is, we need 1 million troops. Huh. Immediately. Second level amplification, efficacy X1000. Those 1 million reinforcements actually arrive. Now they open fire. 
but each one of them is equipped with 1000x the firepower. Total attack signal, $1 million backslash text, soldiers, backslash times 1000 backslash text, x weapon efficacy, equals 1 billion backslash text, signal units, dollar. Conclusion, a normal mosquito bite is a minor skirmish of 10,000 signal units. Your reaction now is an all-out nuclear war of 1 billion signal units. On a signal level, your body has launched an immune assault that is 100,000 times more intense. A normal immune response is your body putting up a wanted poster at the site of the bite. Your current response is to detonate a tactical nuclear weapon on your own arm, just to eliminate the mailman who was posting the wanted poster. The scalding ground zero, your arm is being cooked. The ground zero of this nuclear war is that bump on your arm, which has now swollen to the size of a tennis ball. Now, we need to calculate what is actually happening inside this storm. The answer, your arm is being cooked alive by your own immune system. This sounds absurd, but it's backed by cold, hard physics, thermodynamics. Hardcore calculation time too, the dual heating of the immune system. An immune response is, at its core, a violent biochemical reaction involving trillions of cells. And biochemical reactions generate heat, they are exothermic. 1. The single cell generator. An activated immune cell, like a T-cell or macrophage, during its respiratory burst, will see its metabolic rate instantly skyrocket by tenfold or more. It becomes a micro-dash generator, frantically burning ATP, energy currency, to create chemical weapons. 2. Total heat at the battlefield. In that tennis ball-sized area, we can conservatively estimate there are 10 billion cells, including your body cells and the over-mobilized immune cells. 3. The 1000X disaster. Now, let's add our 1000X efficacy setting. Total heat equals 10 billion cells times 10X normal metabolism times 1000X strength and efficacy. The resulting number is astronomical. We don't need the exact jowls. We just need this deduction. The local rate of energy release in your arm is now far, far greater than your body's ability to dissipate that heat. A normal immune response is like lighting a match on your arm to burn the invader, which is why it feels warm. The 1000X immune response is like detonating a thermite grenade under your skin. Result, the internal local temperature of your arm will, within seconds, skyrocket from 37 degrees Celsius 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit to over 60 degrees Celsius 140 degrees Fahrenheit. What is 60 degrees Celsius? It's the temperature for pasteurization. It's the temperature at which an egg white turns solid and opaque when you fry it. Congratulations! You have become the first and only human in history to be bitten by a mosquito and have their own arm slow cooked to medium rare. Your T-cells are indiscriminately cooking the mosquito saliva, your own collagen, your muscle fibers, and your nerve endings. This is the real reason for the volcanic burst of pain. The countdown to death. Did you think this was just a local disaster? Did you think you could just chop off your arm and survive? That's naive. Those one billion units of war signals, cytokines, have already hopped on the bloodstream express train and have notified your entire body within seconds. Your body has received the message, the apocalypse is here. Now, let's experience the final, spectacular 90 seconds of your life, from a first-person perspective. T plus 30 seconds, the great flood, and the dizziness. You collapse onto the lawn, trying to stand, but a powerful wave of dizziness hits you. The world in front of you begins to go dark. What happened? Your T-cells have issued a single, insane order to all 100,000 kilometers of your capillaries. Open the floodgates. The enemy is everywhere. All plasma must leak from the vessels to drown them. This is the ultimate form of septic shock. Your blood vessels are no longer sealed pipes. They have become a leaking sieve. The water in your blood, plasma, is frantically pouring into your tissues. Your body, like a leaking inflatable doll, begins to swell all over. But inside your blood vessels, your blood pressure is plummeting. Your heart begins to race, frantically pumping, nothing, trying to move blood that is no longer there. Your brain, starved of oxygen, begins to shut down. This is why you feel dizzy. T plus 60 seconds, the boiling and the drowning. You're on the ground, shaking violently. You feel hot and cold. No, you feel like you are boiling. What happened? Your thermostat, the hypothalamus, has received those one billion distress signals. It completely panics. Normal fever, enemies are here. Let's set the thermostat to 39 degrees Celsius, 102 degrees Fahrenheit, and burn them out. 1000X fever. We are losing the war. Everyone. Detonate the fuel bays and the reactor core. We will die with the enemy. Your brain issues the meltdown command. The needle on your internal thermometer is madly rushing towards 43 degrees Celsius, 109 degrees Fahrenheit, or even higher. At this temperature, the invaders will die, but your own brain proteins will also permanently denature. Just like a fried egg. You begin to cough violently, trying to breathe, 
but you can't get any air. What happened? Your lungs are the next victim of friendly fire. Your T-cells are attacking your lung capillaries, causing them to flood, too. Blood and fluid are pouring into your alveoli, air sacs. You are experiencing acute respiratory distress syndrome, ARDS. You are lying on a dry lawn, but you are literally drowning in your own plasma. Your immune system, in its effort to protect you, has cut off your oxygen supply. T plus 90 seconds, the blackout, and the silence. Your convulsions stop. Your breathing becomes shallow. What happened? Your kidneys and liver, having completely lost all blood pressure and oxygen, and simultaneously being assaulted by the T-cells, chemical weapons, have sent their final server offline error message. They have collectively gone on strike. This is multiple organ failure. You are dead. Within three minutes of being bitten by a mosquito, you have perfectly speedrun every single one of the most fatal symptoms in the ICU. Your T-cells, in order to protect you from the minor inconvenience of an itch, have successfully, efficiently, and with extreme professionalism, killed you. The paradox, birth of the glass wolverine. But, we're in the, what if, business. How can we let you die so cheaply? What if, at the very moment that mosquito bit you, you were already inside a level 5 biosafety lab with the world's most advanced medical equipment? 100 top doctors and AI robots immediately begin emergency treatment. They use an ECMO machine to replace your heart and lungs, a dialysis machine to replace your kidneys, and they pump you full of massive doses of immune suppressants. A miracle happens. You survive. So, what would your new life be like? The answer, you would become the most fragile and, simultaneously, the most formidable person on the planet. You are a living paradox. The glass man form, a gust of wind could kill you. You can never leave that sterile bubble. Your 1000 XT cells are a paranoid, 24-7 madman on high alert. You cannot breathe outdoor air, a single grain of pollen. To your T cells, that's not pollen, that's an alien mothership. You will immediately trigger a full tier 3 self-destruct. You cannot eat normal food, a tiny peanut fragment. That's not food, that's a bioweapon. You will experience the most severe anaphylactic shock in human history. You cannot shake hands, the harmless normal commensal bacteria on another person's skin. To your T cells, that's an invading alien ground force. Your life, you must live on 100% sterile nutrient fluids, breathing air filtered 18 times, forever living inside a glass bubble. The Wolverine form, cancer is a joke to you. But at the same time, in one specific area, you would gain godlike abilities. You will be 1000% immune to cancer. Why? Cancer is one of the most terrifying diseases of our time. Why is it so hard to treat? Hardcore science, because cancer cells are you. They are your own cells, just slightly mutated. Your normal T-cells, on patrol, see them and get confused. T-cells are trained never to attack self, so they often ignore cancer cells or attack half-heartedly. But your 1000 XT cells, they have no manners. They are ruthless paranoiacs. In your body, the instant the very first cell mutates and becomes cancerous, before it can even divide into two, your 1000 X T cell patrol will instantly kick down the door, and with antimatter cannon level firepower, will completely annihilate that slightly weird-looking self-cell and its entire neighborhood tissue in 0.1 nanoseconds. The paradox is complete. You are a glass man, a speck of dust can kill you, but you are also a wolverine, the most terrifying human disease will never ever be able to touch you. All right, here comes a crazy philosophical question. If you were offered this deal right now, you gain permanent, total immunity to all forms of cancer, but the price is that you must live in a sterile bubble forever, never again breathing fresh air, never again hugging a loved one. Tell me in the comments, would you take this deal? All right, our crazy ladder has reached its end. From an absurd backyard self-destruction, to the ultimate paradox of the glass wolverine. This insane story is, in reality, the most profound love letter we could write to our own bodies. It doesn't praise strength, it praises balance. We live in an age obsessed with more. More power, faster speeds, stronger brains, more productivity. We are also obsessed with stronger immunity, frantically buying expensive superfoods and immune boosters, trying to arm our T-cells to the teeth. But we forget. Stronger does not always equal better. This science fiction story is already happening in microversions, in our real world every day. What are allergies? That's just our T-cells mistaking harmless pollen for an invader. What are autoimmune diseases, like lupus or rheumatoid arthritis? That's friendly fire. That's a paranoid T-cell soldier attacking our own joints, skin, and organs. Our species survived 4 billion years of evolution not through 1000x brute force. We survived because of the tear-jerkingly brilliant wisdom of our T-cells. The real miracle isn't that a T-cell can kill. The real miracle is its near-perfect regulation. It knows when to launch a thunderous attack and when to stand down. 
it's that when it patrols your body, it can accurately distinguish between a deadly influenza virus and a harmless piece of lunch meat. So, the next time a mosquito bites you and you just feel a little itch, don't complain. You should be grateful. That small, annoying red bump is not a failure of your immune system. On the contrary, it is your T-cell, in an act of extreme restraint, elegance, and profound wisdom, telling you, don't worry boss, I've got this, but, no need to use the nukes. And that, just right, wisdom, is life itself.